All right, in this topic, composition of two functions advanced, we're going to look at three different examples. They're going to ask, give you two functions, in this case, f of x and g of x, and they're going to ask you to find the composition of the two functions, in this case, f composited with g um, of x, and they want you to find the domain of f composited with g. Okay, so the order this is li listed in is important if it's g composited with f versus um, f composited with g. So I always look at this one that's next to the x value. Remember, this is not multiplication. Okay, it's kind of a form of substitution. So what we're going to do is I'm going to um, rewrite this as f composited with g of x. So I see that the g of x function is calculated first. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the g of x function, I'm going to take that result and plug it into the f function and then simplify. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to rewrite this as f and then replace that g of x with what g of x equals, which is an x minus 3. So I'm going to do f of x minus 3. Okay, so I'm going to substitute that into the f function. Everywhere I have an x, I'm going to replace that with an x minus 3. So this is going to be equal to the square root of 2, and in place of x, I put x minus 3 plus 8. To kind of see what I'm doing, I'm substituting in place of x, x minus 3. So I have to do the same thing over here to the right side of the equation. Okay, now we're going to need this part when we go to find the domain. We're going to come back to this um, equation right here. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and simplify this. So I can multiply the 2 with the x and the, min the minus 3. So that's going to give me 2x minus 6 plus 8, and that's all inside of a square root. And 2x... Um, my, uh, so I'm going to take think of this minus 6 as a negative 6 plus 8, and that's going to give me a positive 2. So I have 2x plus 2. And that is what f composited with g of x equals. So you're basically taking um, the g function and plugging it into the f function. Okay. Now, to find the domain, remember what domain is. Domain are all the possible x values. So what we want to do is we want to look at, when we're finding the domain, we want to look at our e composition function before we simplified it. So that's this little star section right here. And um, this example, it's, does, it's not really important, but on the third example that I'm going to give you today, you're going to see why that's important to do. So it's just a good habit to always go back to this original function. Now when you have square roots, everything inside of the square root has to be greater than or equal to zero. So we can find our domain or our possible x values that we can plug into this composition function and get solutions back by taking the stuff that's underneath the um, square root. I know really technical term stuff. We're going to take all of that, that whole expression there, and it, we're going to say, hey, that has to be greater than or equal to zero because we're not going to take the square root of any negative numbers. Okay? These are for real numbers. We're not doing any imaginary numbers in these. Okay, so no i's. Okay, so here we're going to get we're going to go ahead and multiply this out. We get 2x minus 6 plus 8 is greater than or equal to 0. So we get 2x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 0. We subtract 2 from both sides and we divide both sides by a positive 2, so the direction of the inequality stays the same. That's going to give me a negative 1. Remember, we only change the direction of the inequality when we multiply or divide by a negative number. So this, these are our um, x values, our domain values, but we need to put it in set notation. So remember, set notation, and this is basically going to be, if I was to graph x is greater than or equal to a negative 1. The equal to part gives me a filled in circle, and greater than would be shaded to the right. 
And so set notation basically comes from the left here, and um, it starts at a negative 1, so I put parenthesis negative 1. Oops, and I want to put that bracket, because bracket means it's part of the solution. And that goes all the way over to the right with no restriction, so that's a positive infinity. So we use this symbol to represent positive infinity. That is not part of the actual, there's no boundary there, so I put a parenthesis. Okay, so bracket should, means that this end point is part of the solution. Okay, and we're going to have infinity. If it was going the other direction, we'd have a negative infinity on this side. Okay, this is your domain. So if you're not really clear on that set notation, let's follow along one more time and see if when you see the next example, if that helps you see the pattern. Okay, so here we're going to, again, here's two other functions. I notice this one has a fraction in it. Okay, so let's see what happens. Again, this is going to be g composited with h of x. So I'm going to take the h function, and I'm going to replace h of x with 4x plus 9 here. So I get, I'm going to plug that into my g function here. So now I'm going to go to my g function, and everywhere I have an x, in my g function, I'm going to replace both of these x's with 4x plus 9. So this gives me 4x plus 9 plus 4 over 4x plus 9 plus 3. Now I'm going to uh, put a little star here because we're going to come back to this. This is going to be what I use um, to calculate the domain, but we're going to simplify it for our answer here. So this will be 4x plus 13 over 4x plus 12. Okay, we can't simplify this, so that is just g composited with h of x. That's our composition function, and now we're going to calculate um, the x values, are our do which are our domain. So what we're going to do here is we're going to see that um, you have a fraction. When you have a fraction, you have to remember that you have a restricted value. Your um, denominator of your fraction cannot equal 0. So I know that 4x plus 9 plus 3 cannot equal 0. Okay, so we're going to find this restricted value here. So we're going to, um, this is going to be 4x plus 12 cannot equal 0. So I subtract 12 from both sides. 4x cannot equal a negative 12. Divide both sides by 4. x cannot equal a negative 3. So I want you to think of what this would look like on a number line. Negative 3. That means I would have an open circle here because negative 3 is not part of my solution. But I can plug anything else I want to into for x and get an answer. So there's not going to be any other restriction. So it's anything to the left of negative 3 and anything to the right of negative 3. Now this one, I have two um, sections of solution, so we're going to need to use the union symbol. So let's first of all talk about this stuff to the left. So I can see I'm coming from the left, and there's no restriction on the left, so I put a negative infinity there with a um, parenthesis, and that goes until I get to negative 3. Negative 3 is not part of the solution, so I need a parenthesis again. And then we're going to use this U symbol, which means union. And I'm going to then put the other part of my solution here, which starts at a negative 3, but negative 3 is not part of it, so I have a parenthesis, and goes all the way to the right with no restriction, so I put positive infinity with a parenthesis. And this is the domain of G composited with h. Remember, it represents all of the x values that I can plug into the composition function and get a solution back. Okay, so let's look at that last example. Now this one's going to be the um, example I talked about um, where it's going to be really important to not use the simplified version of the composition. You'll see why as we go through this one. So this will be g composited with h of x. So I'm going to take my h function and I'm going to plug that into my g function. So I'm going to replace h of x with the square root of x minus 4. 
Okay, and now I'm going to go to my G function here and replace everywhere I have an X, I'm going to replace it with the square root of X minus 4. So this gives me square root of X minus 4 quantity squared minus 3. Okay, I'm going to put a little star there because we're going to come back to this when we find the domain. And we can simplify this. Squaring and square root, they undo each other, and that gives me X minus 4 minus 3, which gives us X minus 7. So G composited with H of X simplifies to X minus 7. But because of um, what you know, we're substituting into here, we need to look at our, you know, what are our restricted values. We have a square root here, which we notice disappears when we do our composition. But we need to consider it when we're um, calculating the domain. So as long as you come back to here, you'll see that you have that square root. We know that everything inside of the square root has got to be greater than or equal to zero. So x minus four is greater than or equal to zero. So now we just need to solve this. We add four to both sides. X is greater than or equal to four. Again, think of what that it looks like on a number line. So here at four, I have a filled in circle because four is part of the solution. And it is X is greater than, so that shades to the right. Any So my solutions for X are four and anything bigger than four. So I put this in set notation, I start come from the left here and my left boundary is 4 and it's part of the solution so I put a bracket and then I'm going off to the right and there's no restriction on that there's no endpoint so I put infinity and a parenthesis and this is the domain of G composited with H